This program and its contents are designed for information and educational purposes only. This program does not render medical advice or professional services and is not intended to be a substitute for professional care. The information provided here should not be used for the purposes of diagnosing or treating a medical or psychiatric condition. If you have or suspect you may have a health problem, consult your health care provider. Hi, welcome to Positive Momentum TV. I'm Diane Silva, and we're back with Chris Silva, and we're talking about anxiety. We're talking about how, this segment, we're going to talk about how to recognize it. We were informed that, you know, because we are so familiar with the anxiety, with, with what we do, how, we, how our dance is choreographed, and recognizing when one of us is experiencing anxiety and how to support it, that maybe other people may not know how to recognize it. And again, we are not medical professionals. We are not even implying we are. This has been our experience, and what we're trying to do here is help others who are in similar situations maybe recognize and find ways to get the help they need. Or maybe we can just help by supporting you and helping you recognize through our journey. So, Chris, if you would, um, kind of just recap and give us a background. <laughs> background about what? <laughs> um, you know, how you learned to recognize the anxiety. What, you know, because you may not have been familiar with it when you, we first um, started realizing what was going on. Yes. Um, as far as uh, the initial stages of, of learning things, um, not knowing or experiencing a person that has anxiety before, uh, I didn't know really how to deal with it. Well, did um, you know what it was to start with? No. Okay. No. I'll, I'll, typically, what ended up for us, uh, just history was that we would end up, I don't want to say in an argument, but uh, a discussion. It was an of, argument sometimes. Of, yeah. Where we would disagree on things, not knowing the root cause of what was causing it. Right. So as we have learned that some of this has to do with uh, the anxiety that you go through and recognizing that anxiety and being able to adapt and, and try things that uh, can help you. Okay. Well, what I'd like to do first is go through and understand and help paint the picture of what it could look like. And it's not always necessarily anxiety. Anxiety is a form of fear. It's just the best way I, exp I can describe anxiety from my standpoint is two different things. It is an overreaction, and please don't take this personally to anybody. It is, it, it's a compulsive, obsessive compulsive thought or emotion that keeps kind of gathering. And it's a time travel. What if, or I remember when, and putting the two together, and then you're in this moment, but you're not really in the moment. So, you know, you mentioned- But it's within yourself. This is within myself. Yourself. This so is what's going on with me. people around you don't know, have any idea what's going on. Right, and, and there's so many complex components to this, and that's why I want to dedicate this segment, or this show, to being able to recognize hey, within yourself, what am I experiencing? What's going on and how to, maybe maybe we can come up with some pointers on how to bring ourselves back to the moment. And number two is from the supporter standpoint, which is where I really want to focus, is you know what do they see, what do they endure, and how do they take care of themselves? But first of all, let's go to how to recognize that fear is becoming a problem. And that's the best way I want to look at anxiety, is it's a fear response that it has become a problem in your life where you know, you're not doing the things you want to do and your life is getting smaller. Does yeah. that make sense? No, I, I understand what you're saying. And you know, to your point, uh, you know, previous conversation that we had was that um, what I experienced was the fact that you would go through you know, periods of being argumentative or um, what I used before was combative. Um, basically, what I experienced was it was like you were locked and loaded and no matter what was said, it would be an argument. Mm -hmm. you know? So something that typically we wouldn't argue about it would become an argument because you being in an anxious moment. Okay. So that's that's one of the things that um, you know, kind of breaking it down to 
uh, a level of demonstration of, of my experience is that aspect where you do, you know it, it was something that I'd get to the point where I felt like I was walking on eggshells because I was afraid to say anything and afraid to uh, because I didn't know what your reaction was going to be. And I, I really can understand that. And I'm actually experiencing an aha moment at, the, at this moment because you're talking about this. And I remember in a past life where, you know, I was, I had PMS, you know, or at least that's what we thought it was. And as you're talking about this, I'm realizing it wasn't so much PMS as it was anxiety, you know, where it was, and it could have been a combination of the two, you know, you mm -hmm. have that, that whatever. But I feel so sorry embarrassed and some somewhat shameful because you know it's like what i endure you know you shouldn't have to walk on eggshells we should be in, we're in a loving relationship and and we communicate well together we work well together we do but, now right but, but that <laughs> at that point we're yes. still learning i mean and that's that's part of to me the growth of a relationship is finding out uh, whether it's with a spouse, uh, a significant, you know, other, or even a friend, or you know, a child. When, when a child um, is learning things about that person and being able to ra react in an appropriate way. Um, well, and one of the things people say is so rather than react, respond. So react is, is impulsive, and I, okay. and I don't want to get tangled no. up in the words. No, I understand. But we're, we're trying to paint pictures here, so I really want to really elaborate. It's, it's a response, not a reaction, because when we react, it's usually in anger or an impulsive. It's emotional, where if we respond... Well, sometimes it is. Well, it is, yeah. because if you feel like you're being attacked, yeah. or you're walking on eggshells, or you can't be safe and comfortable in your own home, heck, who wouldn't be? Yeah. You know, and I, I, I want to go on record saying I apologize. I think I have before, <laughs> but it's like, oh my God, and I apologize to anybody else I've put this <laughs> through this. You know, I didn't know what was going on. Mm -hmm. You know, like I said in the last segment, by the time I wanted to put me in the closet, I can only imagine what everybody else is feeling. So, and I apologize back, yeah, um, okay, back to you. <laughs> Okay. What does it look like uh, from your, what, what signs and symptoms do you notice from the external standpoint when you notice that fear or it's becoming an issue? And we're going to use the term anxiety interchangeably at this point because that's what I have a diagnostic diagnosis of. So let's use that. When you see it coming on, you know, I go from, okay, a normal, sane, individual, you well, know. And let's to, to your that. point, I mean, things can be going, uh, having a very normal day. Mm -hmm. You know, you're going through, you're going through uh, the whatever activity you're going through the day. At, at some point when, and you, you don't know when the trigger happens right. of what sets it off. Right. So, um, in a sense, uh, I have learned to find, I, I've learned that depending upon the situation, so say for instance, we don't have a trip okay. that's coming up. Okay. Um, I do know that for the most part, there's not going to be an issue, you know, and if you do get anxious, you only get it, get it at a lower level and, you know, we can talk about it and get through it. Right now, okay. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, go no. ahead. Finish your thought. I apologize. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. Um, now, if we have something coming up, like either a flight, or a long trip, or you know, sometimes it's even just to Lincoln. Um, sometimes those things. I would say, you know, to be very upfront, there's times I am I'm on guard. You know, and it's kind of like I, I, I stay on guard. So I'm, I'm, I may be oversensitive to your reactions too, but I do have a heightened kind of awareness of, of watching you in your tone of voice, um, in what you say, how you react doing just normal everyday things. Because 
your pace quickens when you're anxious. And okay. so you may go from doing laundry to this or, you know, you know, doing something on the computer or anything like that. It's like Road boom, runner. boom, 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 boom. <laughs> yeah, you know, it, it is very quick where that's not the pace you normally do. And it's noticeable. So that is something that I notice when you are experiencing the, the anxiety. Okay. Well, and we know, at least now, my anxiety's gone from, I used to have full-blown panic attacks mm -hmm. and what they called free-floating anxiety to, my, the anxiety more now has to do with travel. It's kind of, I've, I've been able to get through most of it. Mm -hmm. So let's kind of um, paint the picture of what you notice. And I know this isn't about me, this is just about recognizing different signs and you know, the out, outward signs of anxiety. Right, because and depending upon what, what you're going through will kind of determine uh, how I want to approach to try and help you. You okay. know, and you know, being in, in a loving relationship with you, my, what I want to do is help you, period. You know, and sometimes even that, when you're anxious, my, my reaction or what I try and do, you take it a different way. And so that time, that, you know, in those types of situations, it kind of compounds the situation. I mean, it just kind of, like you said, spirals out of control. So those things, 